Uh, gaming news. So PlayStation dot 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 five question mark is literally what my um dot trigger is. It, no, no more. Remember because Sony's <laughs> on is is wears a white hat now. They're on the side of the good guys. They they enable the crossplay. So uh, Eddie no longer has anything bad to say about Sony. So so much so that I'm starting off to talk about them. So. So, uh, PlayStation 4, uh, it's five-year anniversary is coming up. Jonna, what's happening, man? Uh, Ken, thanks for joining. Baggy, hello. Hello. Everyone's filtering in here. We appreciate it, guys. Um, yeah, so their fifth-year anniversary of the PlayStation 4 is coming up. I don't know when an exact date is. I think it's sometime this fall. Um, and Sony has confirmed that they are working on the next-generation console. Um, Kinichiro Yoshida, the Sony president and CEO, said at this point, what I can say is that it's necessary to have a next-gen hardware. It's a good quote. Can anyone else... Did you guys hear that quick cricket through my microphone, or is that just... I did hear it. <laughs> I was like, I swear it's not a sound effect. That is just... <laughs> that's just Jiminy Cricket that lives in my basement, and he speaks about the wrong time. Okay. Shut up, Jiminy. All right. All right. Um, so the console's not named... Uh, and there's no info if it's going to be actually called PlayStation 5. Uh, there's also actually no release window even. Um, but the CEO of Sony Interactive, which is official name for their gaming division, everything that heads up, everything PlayStation related, uh, said in May that the next system is due in at least three years. So uh, looking at sometime like this was in May, so probably like uh, math is hard, like 2021, 2022, something like that. So. It's not necessarily around the corner, so to speak. It kind of is in uh, console gaming terms, so to speak. And the fact that they uh, brought it up is significant. So, um, And yeah, so PlayStation 4 is actually Sony's second most successful console since the PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2 is still their best-selling console with 155 million consoles sold. Uh, PlayStation 4 has sold 81.2 million consoles worldwide. So... Uh, and then uh, last point there, uh, many analysts within the industry believe that the end of uh, or that the era of traditional console generations are starting to wind down in favor of something more modular and PC based, um, sort of kind of like a like a, like a steam machine sort of something that you can upgrade parts of it instead of having to buy a new console. But um, doesn't seem like Sony uh, thinks we're quite there yet because it looks like they're going to stick to disc based games for the foreseeable future. So. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't feel like the PlayStation 4 has been here for almost five years, but I guess it has, you know? I mean, has it's, it really? It has. It has. It has. Yeah. This this fall will be five years, so... Um, three really old. <laughs> yeah, my three... PlayStation 2. My, <laughs> <laughs> do, you still, do you still have it? Do you still have your PlayStation 2? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Right awesome. I had... Oh, look at that. I have a PlayStation Three still. It's uh, it's it it doesn't it gets mad when you try to play play any sort of disc, but it still works from a digital standpoint. So my son's used it to play Minecraft oh, for the most part. So yeah, yeah, it's still kicking. Okay, so um, oh, King's in here, Prismac, Burning Trees, guys, what is happening? Thank you for joining. Hanson, go ham! Holy cow! He went ham. He went ham. He got rid of the X's. Even better. <laughs> NX750, what's happening, man? Huggy Bear. What's going on, man? Huggy already asking questions like Hetty do- like like Huggy does, my man. Okay, all right. <laughs> I think it's combined names there. Uh, all right, so uh, PSN ID name changes, guys. It's finally happening. So um, is, they're actually doing like a like a like a like a pilot program for this right now. I couldn't find any information as how you actually get access to that. Um, but they're rolling it out officially in early 2019. Uh, you will officially be able to change your PlayStation name ID finally. Um, um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around and I'm going to buy up all the names and make you guys uh, pay me a hundred dollars for your name. Uh, that's what I'm going to do because I'm, I'm a troll. So yeah. Uh, so the first PSN name change is going to be free of charge. Uh, changes after that will cost nine 99, which is, I mean, that's how much it costs on Xbox to change your name. I had to change mine. Um, and it was nine 99. So that's about the market price PlayStation plus users will name change will cost four ninety nine, which is kind of confusing. So is it four ninety nine and nine ninety nine? I guess, I guess I could see them making it cheaper because if you're paying for the online service, I guess it's their way of trying to kind of cut you a deal, um, in terms of uh, the pricing there. So, um, little caveat there. It might not work on all games and platforms. Uh, any games published after April 1st of this year will be compatible, uh, as well as some select PlayStation 4 titles before that. But there are going to be some PlayStation 4 titles some pl- and PlayStation 3 titles and Vita titles, uh, which will not support the name change, in which case I guess you'll have to revert to your old name. So, 
Uh, took them long enough. I mean, it's been it's literally been twelve years since the whole PSN thing's been around. They're finally letting us change the name. So, um, you know, super excited about it. <laughs> I need a name change. Right? Same, same. Right, Keo, no. someone buy Eddie's name ASAP. <laughs> no, no, you beat me to it. <laughs> uh, run good, Yoshi. How's it going? Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. I don't think I've seen you in here before. You should get in here. All right. So, all right. So this page one. Just kind of flutters to the ground. <laughs> well, I didn't, all of a sudden I was like, I don't want it to like stab me in the eye on camera. That would be really, that would be really bad. <gasps> Jiminy's still alive. I can, I just know it. I, I've tried to kill Jiminy and Jiminy's still around. So. TOS. Nothing to say, Jiminy. Thank okay. you for the two month resub. What's oh, snap. McMean oh, Dream. What's happening, McMean. dude? Thanks for joining. It's all the cool me. kids are in here now. Look at that. All right. Okay. Okay, next. Uh, Nintendo is adding some games to their online service. Um, as you guys may or may not remember, a couple shows ago we talked about the Nintendo Online. Uh, you get 20 games with that service. It is $20 a month or $3.99 a month or uh, $4.37 if you sign up on the family plan. Still have to do that, by the way. I'm, I'm seriously going to do that. When Smash comes around, I will actually take this seriously. When Smash Brothers comes out, I will actually go and buy this. Until then, I'm... Probably not going to, let's be honest. So. I'm going to keep a tally on how many weeks he says he's going to do this. He's going to at least at like three. So, um, so right now there are 20 games available. Uh, Nintendo just added three games to that service. He added NES Open Tournament Golf, Solomon's Key, and I'm actually excited about this one, Super Dodgeball, which is a game I actually really love. I, ha I played the shit out of that for Game Boy. Um, so that brings the grand total to 23 games. Um, they are also releasing special save data for The Legend of Zelda. So essentially what this is going to do, it's going to allow players to start the adventure with tons of rupees and items, including the white sword, the magical shield, the blue ring, the power bracelet, and the power bracelet. So it's essentially like an easy button. Um, it makes the, the Legend of Zelda play through a little bit easier. I'm like, what, what is this easy stuff? It, it, it wasn't it like that when hard. I played it. Yeah. It play hard. the game the way it's meant to be played. Yeah. Seriously. Honestly. On, um, and they plan to do this for uh, this special save data for some other NES titles. Uh, if, they, if they're going to do that for a game, they need to do it for Castlevania. Castlevania is the hardest game for NES. I have an NES Classic, and I've spent many an hour already trying to beat that game. Even with the save state data, it's still a really hard game. So, anyway. So, there's some Nintendo uh, news for you. And... Oh, look, Splice is in here. What's up, man? Back from his slumber. Thanks for uh, helping us out, out last minute, by the way. So, uh, all right. Keeping it rolling. Uh, Fortnite patch version 6.02. Uh, they're adding the limited time mode, Disco Domination. Uh, it's two two teams of 50. Um, respawning is on until the last Storm Circle. So, that's kind of interesting. Uh, I see your Disco Fever dance music out of the corner of my eye. That's nice. Um... So there's five dance floors that appear on the map when the storm isn't moving. Um, as a team, you you emote on the dance floor. The more people on the dance floor, it raises the disco ball. Uh, the objective is to get your dance meter to 100%, and then you win the match. So that's kind of interesting. Um, people are going to troll the hell out of that. Uh, the add of the quad launcher uh, and various bug fixes and the typical loot rate adjustments and all that kind of stuff that Epic's known for. Uh, so I do believe that is live um, now. I think it was live yesterday, actually. I think you should go Tuesday. So, um, <laughs> so next. Sorry, just over here looking. <laughs> Bring back score attack, please. <laughs> um, oh, man, Fortnite. Good old Fortnite. A oh, little, 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 little plug, by the way. I know we'll probably do this at the end of the show too, but a uh, Fortnite tournament this weekend. So, uh, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> Me and Mars will be the first team out. <laughs> So oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> don't worry about that. Uh, okay. Uh, where's Hugh Graham at fallout 76. So, uh, yeah. So, so, uh, a couple articles, uh, a couple of uh, editors and uh, video game journalists have gotten a chance to play it ahead of the beta. Um, interesting thing about fallout 76. There are, there are no human NPCs whatsoever in the game. Um, I, I guess that actually plays into the story. This is supposed to be right after um, everyone comes out of the vaults. So all the quest givers and whatnot are robots. So there are um, there's no merchants or traveling traders. Anyone who's played a Fallout game are well are, are well aware of those you know those people that walk around or when you're in towns. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And I guess some of the things that they're saying is that it's a bit chaotic um, in terms of the multiplayer, just because. 
Um, uh, so I guess anyone in your group that you're playing with is capable of adding and starting quests or missions. So like, there's no like lead of the pack and they're the one that picks the missions and everyone falls in line. I mean, he was talking about how we got to the point where his squad mates were annoying him because everyone was like a new mission would pop up uh, like all of a sudden and everyone gets to ping for it and, um, kind of everyone can do their own thing. So I don't know if that's something they're going to end up changing if that's how the final game is going to be, but it does seem to be like it's a little bit chaotic just in terms because everyone can add something to the quest queue. There's no like kind of head quest leader or anything like that. Um, and it's uh, and, and going back to the whole no NPC thing, apparently they're, they want the, all of the trading to be hum- player to player based, um, which could be interesting. Um, I think it's kind of cool that um, you have you have to rely on other players too, but allows a lot of um, you know chance for chances for toxicity and trollness. Um, you're not, I mean, you can be killed while you're trading. Like you're not invincible or in like some sort of trade status, so someone could come up and shoot you in the head while you're trying to trade for rat away, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> um, so that's going to be interesting. And 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 there is a penalty. We talked about this a few shows ago when I touched on uh, Fallout 76. There is a penalty for killing other players, um, but only. Time will tell if it's enough to actually discourage because as this uh, one journalist was saying, um, just like GTA, like five minutes in, someone came up and shot him in the head because obviously you're going to try that out to see how that works. So um, um, that's going to be interesting. And then the last little bit here, um, just kidding, not the last little bit because it continues on the next page. Hello, notes. Uh, so you can drop nukes in Fallout 76. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, if you if you get access to these uh, ac- these nuke access codes, you can actually nuke an entire area of the map. Uh, the way it works is a timer actually starts, which allows the players uh, ample time to leave the area, um, and then you can actually watch the explosion. If you get far enough away, you can watch the mushroom cloud and all that kind of stuff. Actually, really cool. Um, and then um, you can actually e- explore the Fallout zone, and you can get high level items and all that kind of stuff if you go back into the area that was bombed. Uh, of course, you'll need like a containment suit or power armor and, or uh, tons of right away. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then um, VATS, which is the with anyone who's played Fallout, that's what they call the combat system, like when you target enemies and stuff. It's not, it doesn't freeze. It doesn't, because in a typical Fallout game, Got, uh, ladies, I don't know if you played Fallout before. Um, when you activate it, it like it, it that's kind of like the RPG element of it. Like it freezes the combat. You can target limbs, um, all that kind of stuff. Right, your head, body, legs. Even if you want to, you know, just kind of gimp them so you can run away. Um, it's 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 real time, which makes sense because you know you're playing online with other people. So I kind of suspected this would be the case. Um, you could still target target body parts and whatnot, but it's it's more of like a real time kind of bar, uh, target system um, more than anything else. So. Um, and yeah, so the beta for that kicks off on October 23rd and it releases November 14th. So <laughs> take that cricket. <laughs> okay. Uh, I did miss lady edge. What's happening? Thanks for joining. Like I said, the nation of Wakanda, Mars land and the huggy lands will band together, rid the world of nukers. <laughs> huggy, I love you, man. All right. So black ops four. Yes, I'm very excited about this game. I'm very excited. Musi's dancing. Uh, it is available for preload. Right, meow. I wrote the word meow down. I would. You can. I literally wrote the word right meow. I thought it was funny. Um, so the download size it's roughly 55 gigabytes uh, for PC. Console is around 50 gigabytes. Um, it will be available at midnight October 12th Eastern Standard Time. Um, because other time zones don't exist if you don't believe in them. So, um, (laughs) (laughs) it's like Santa Claus and the Easter bunny. (laughs) You didn't know that? Um, uh, (laughs) so, um, and, and interestingly enough, players have actually found a way to preload the game without a code. Um, if you have the beta installed and you, you and you left it on your computer after the beta ran, um, what the way Battle not, Battle.net, which is a service, um, Blizzard service that um, Call of Duty is going to come through, it automatically updates the the um, anything you have in there uh, constantly. So it accidentally upgraded to the full version of the game. Now you can't open it and play it, um, but Who um, you, you play with. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, exactly. I mean, you're no figured it out. <laughs> right. And I mean, all, it, and literally, literally all it was allowing you to do is to, to install the game. Like you couldn't play it. You would still have to pay for it come October 12th. Um, but th- I mean, the way it's supposed to do, you pay for it, then you get the code to download it. So it's kind of a weird thing. And as you can imagine, um, 
it's probably already fixed by now. I'm sure Blizzard and 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 Activision have gone back to fix that. So, um, and the uh, disc actually is getting a day one patch. Um, this is mostly to keep um, prevent leaks because uh, you know a lot of times what happens. Um, anyone who's worked in gaming retail, um, video games have street uh, street release dates, meaning. Um, you're technically not supposed to sell that game before that date. Uh, stores can actually get really big fines uh, if they do, but it happens all the time. I, usually, there's always someone the day before or a couple hours before midnight that has access to uh, access to a specific game, and they're playing it early. Um, to prevent this, they are releasing a day one patch, so you will not be able to play that game until October 12th. So that's kind of interesting. So, uh, and other thing too, if you're, if you're super hungry for some blackout action, uh, on console, you only have to wait for the game to load to 30% and then you can actually start playing blackout, um, before the rest of the game loads. So that's kind of cool. And then GameStop is horrid. Just put the console on offline mode. You know, GameStop still has its uses. Um, um, mostly when I was tracking down, uh, old, um, like, um, and Disney infinity figures and stuff like that. But um, yeah, and you know, now that I made that made made the jump to PC, I really don't spend a lot of time at GameStop. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. So, uh, 7 p.m. tomorrow, love the the mom and pop show that I frequently just release games whenever someone asks. <laughs> That's awesome, and I'm gonna get mom and pop in a lot of trouble one day. So I hope they don't get caught. Uh, <laughs> don't rat them out. Don't rat out mom and pa. Snitches get stitches. All right. Um, so the humble bundle for November. I'm actually going to get this this week because this is really awesome. So um, the way humble bundle works, they usually announce a couple of games that that are going to come out. They're going to be part of the bundle that following month being like November. Um, and you have access to those right away. And then they end up releasing more games in that bundle in November. So the three early release games are Hollow Knight. Seven Days to Die, and Hitman the Complete First Season. Uh, for $12, you can get those three games. Now, uh, I'm a big fan of Hitman. I think I have a couple, the first or second episode on my PlayStation 4. I had been meaning to get the complete season. So for $12, that game alone is an absolute steal. Um, uh, and if you're like me, uh, what you do, you'll sign up, you'll get the games, and you'll cancel it. So <laughs> that's how that works. <laughs> and I believe we do have a couple people in Twitch here who do have their own humble bundle links. Um, oh, I'm not nice. Sure who exactly does besides one person? So I don't want to throw names out there, but you can always ask around in like yes. chat. I'm sure they'll Sometimes be. They even check out the um, the sales channel. The sales channel. Thank you. I was like name <laughs> tag. That's not right. <laughs> no, Words. Words. Occasionally they'll. I know at least one of them posts. Mm -hmm. the, the newer release bundles. So. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so I uh, actually have a little video I want to show, show here, actually. So, okay. Uh, you guys are all familiar with Super Mario Odyssey, right? Or in Mario in general, right? Yes. Uh, everyone knows what it's like to ground pound a Goomba, right? The little weird mushroom yes. things with feet. Um, okay, so this is this is the biggest Goomba stack ground pound ever in Mario Odyssey. And I honestly thought it was just really cute and funny, so we're going to play this real quick. Oh, Hold on. Oh, God, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> just a second. <laughs> okay, this is how we're going to do this. Hold on. Your stream is very important to us. There we go. And I'm going to do that. And then I am going to turn off this. Ha ha. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, my names are still there. It's okay. We're in the game. We're featured. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Goomba number 777. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all those Goombas, dude. That's insane. It's me. Do it. Do it. The top is way too high to fit on screen instead we're looking at the middle. <laughs> that is insane. Look at that. Dude, How do so people crazy. have time to do this stuff? No!
<laughs> Poor Goombas. Look at all those Goombas. Goomba mosh pit. <laughs> They're moshing so hard. That's so funny. And funny. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. surviving ones are like what did you do so there you have it Japan. the um the uh, <laughs> the world the largest ground pound and i do believe the number of goombas was um 200 i think i read somewhere in the article 200. so 200 goombas so i thought that was cute all right anyway so what's up edge edge what's happening man <laughs> thanks for joining all right so Joker, oh snap, Joker lover in the house. Joker, how you doing, girl? Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Okay, back to the news. Uh, so Project X Cloud. No, this is not a name of some subversive anime you never heard of. Uh, this is the name of Microsoft's new Xbox game cloud service. Um, uh, the object of it is to bring Xbox slash PC quality games, which Xbox and PC don't have the same quality. So that's kind of a weird sentence. Um, to mobile. Um, Essentially, the way it works is it's going to connect. Uh, you'll be able to connect an Xbox controller via Bluetooth to a mobile or a tablet. Um, I'm kind of wondering. Uh, it didn't say anywhere in this article. I'm kind of interested if there's going to be some sort of if Apple is going to support this at all. Because I mean, you know, Microsoft and I don't know. So um, basically, um, so the X Cloud will support 4G and 5G networks, and it uses Microsoft Azure, which is just what they call their cloud computing service. Um, to be able to stream Xbox and PC quality games to your tablet. Um, apparently, this is something a couple of companies are trying to do, as you'll see here with this next point I'm going to talk about. Um, it's going to enter public beta in 2019. Uh, no specifics other than that. Um, but it will be in direct competition to uh, Project Stream, which is uh, Google's Google's own stream service. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Project Steam. Uh, stream, not Steam. Those are two different things. Um, Ubisoft is partnering with Google for this. So essentially back starting on October 5th, uh, select partners will be given the chance to start streaming Assassin's Creed Odyssey through Google Chrome, of all things, uh, until the middle of January 2015. 2015. What? 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 2019. <laughs> We're going back in time in the DeLorean. Um, 1080p, 60 frames per second. Um, and I'm over here like, Chrome can barely handle when I like watch six streams at the same time. And it's going to stream Assassin's Creed. Interesting. Okay. Um, and all you need to be included in this, it is, they do pick people at random. Um, but you need a Google account, a Ubisoft account, a PC with the most recent version of Chrome, uh, a rel reliable internet connection, go figure, uh, and a wireless controller or external mouse. Uh, sorry, Mars, they do not recommend a trackpad. So rip that <laughs> i saw when they said a track positive track pads not recommended that you immediately popped in my head i was like no mars you want me to use her, her trackpad re track unless you're mars <laughs> Don't um uh and so uh you don't need a copy of assassin's creed for the free test um you get so you're essentially getting to play assassin's creed for free but there are some limitations you can't participate in the in-game economy um or do any microtransactions or anything like that um so um that's kind of interesting i don't know why everyone's feeling like like streaming is a way to go i don't feel like anyone's really ready for that um i'm really there was a video of this i couldn't find the video um i'm curious how stable it is and what kind of you know like uh buffering and or lag you're gonna get so interesting interesting okay all right next so red dead redemption 2 pre-order bonus so if uh so you know grand theft auto online still very much a thing still very popular it, it's it makes boatloads of money every single month for rockstar um Funny enough, there, there's there's no word on when the next GTA is going to come out. Um, but but uh, if you pre-order uh, 
the uh, if you pre-order Red Dead Redemption 2, either from the PlayStation or uh, the Microsoft Store, what face? Who, who actually does that? Um, by October 15th, you will receive a million dollars in-game GTA cash, um, which you will be able to spend on like one thing in that game because everything in GTA Online is super expensive. Um, uh, the deposits will start October 16th and arrive no later than October 22nd. Um, you can also receive a bonus for uh, they're, they're, they're releasing the stone hatchet and the Dover revolver um, that is going to be in Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, there are some challenges you can do in GTA Online that can net you $250,000 each of in-game cash. So that's kind of cool. Kind of crossing over uh, the games there. So, OK, uh, Stardew Valley is coming to mobile iOS later this month, and it is coming to Android soon for all you farming waifus out there. Ow, I hit my face on that one. See, I told you I was going to paper cut myself. It was coming. It was coming. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, the Overwatch Halloween Terror event is live. Uh, there are nine new skins to unlock. The PVE, the PVE, where English is hard, uh, mode called Junkenstein's Revenge is also live. Uh, the added Bridget and Tracer to that mode, uh, that PVE mode. Uh, haunted versions of the Chateau Gilliard, Hollywood, and Eichenwald maps. Um, are kind of some of the things, you know, they dress them up all Halloween-y style. Um, new legendary skins, the Banshee Moria, the Jack-O-Lantern Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball is the, the hamster, right? Yeah. That sounds yeah. adorable. Yeah, He's in a Jack-O-Lantern. So oh, my God. I wish I had a picture of that. That sounds effing adorable. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Enchanted Armor Farah are uh, some of those legendary skins you can get there. Uh, that event runs until 11.59 Pacific Time or 12.59 Eastern Standard Time of October 31st. So you basically have until Halloween to play that. So <laughs> Joker, yes, Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> Keo, no economy, riot. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so a little bit of crossover news. This is um it's 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 kind of gaming news, but it's also um TV news. Uh, as you guys may or may oh not know. God. I know, I'm sorry. Um uh, as you guys may or may not know, they are Witcher Three. Everyone's familiar with the game Witcher Three, right? Uh, the Wild Hunt is considered one of the best open world RPG slash action games out there. Um, Netflix is doing an adaptation of the show. Um, so the guy that played Superman, Henry Cavill, uh, he was also in a new Mission Impossible movie. He got cast as Geralt. He's, that's the main character. That's the Witcher. Um, and they actually cast two of the most important female roles that are going to be in that show. His girlfriend, Yennefer, um, uh, actress named Anya Sherlota. I don't know her. She was in Wanderlust. I've never even seen that movie, and I've seen pretty much everything. But she's got brown hair and blue eyes, and she looks like Yennefer, so good job, guys. Uh, she's going to play his girlfriend. And then uh, Siri, who is kind of like his adopted daughter, is uh, being played by the young actress Freya Allen. Um, she is on the Netflix show Into the Badlands, which I have seen. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, they both look enough like them. Um, I'm really interested to see the way they're going to go with this show. Uh, I kind of have reservations, uh, about Henry Cavill as Gerald until I realized that, um, most of what Gerald does is grunt and not really like emote very well. So you don't have to be a good actor. And I mean, he's going to be able to fill out the suit just fine. I mean, the dude's pretty ripped. So, um, yeah, so that'll be that's that's kind of cool. So, um, Borderlands Two is coming to PlayStation VR in December. Um, it is single player only, uh, but they're adding tons of VR features. Um, there was a whole list of stuff. I just wrote this one thing down. You'll be able to um, do virtual slowdown of the combat. Um, that's kind of cool. Uh, PlayStation VR is obviously still doing really well. I'm not. I'm sorry. I have a PlayStation VR. I haven't played it in literally months. Um, but, you know, Borderlands 2 is a fun game, so um, it'd be a lot more fun if you could play it with people, but, you know, baby steps, I guess. So, all right. Uh, last couple points here, then I'm going to wrap up the gaming news. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, going back to that, uh, has the highest concurrent player count in the series to date. Um, a 33% increase over Assassin's Creed Origins, which was the previous Assassin's Creed title. Uh, and it has 62,000 concurrent players on Steam. Um, the previous Assassin's Creed had 41,000, so uh, I know a lot of people in the community are enjoying that. Uh, Bojangles was streaming some of that last night. Um, looks like it's a lot of fun. Um, I've played 35.3 uh, Assassin's Creed games, so I personally have not been playing it because I kind of got burnt out on Assassin's Creed. Uh, <laughs> don't ask me how I played one-third of an Assassin's Creed game. I think it was a mobile or something. It's, it's fine. Um, all right, so uh, last point here. Uh, Microsoft is in talks to buy uh, Studio, the, stu the studio, 
uh, Obsidian Entertainment. Um, sources say the deal is 90% complete, uh, but of course, as what always happens, both Microsoft and Obsidian Entertainment are not commenting on this deal until it gets finished. Uh, if you're not familiar with Obsidian, maybe some of the games that they have um, uh, developed will. They're uh, basically an RPG studio, uh, Fallout New Vegas. Uh, Alpha Protocol, Protocol, Never Win Nights 2, and Pillars of Eternity are some of the games. So, and that, damn it, that is your gaming news. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is Amazing. that. And playing it right now. <laughs> As I have to see how he looks like in the armor and all, but like what Eddie said, he does, you don't really know how the emotion be drilled. Yeah, dude, give him white, give him the white wig. Put the, the creepy cat contacts in. Uh, don't let him shave for like two weeks. He's good to go. Right? I mean, give him two swords. Give him the, the silver and the steel sword. Um, we're good to go. So I'm, my biggest thing with him is his, his voice isn't deep enough. Like, Geralt's got a really deep voice. Like, uh, I think Joe DiMaggio is the voice actor for him who also does uh, Marcus Phoenix in Gears of War. Just to give you an idea of like how gruff and how deep his voice usually is. Uh, Henry Cavill doesn't sound like that. So, you know, small thing. But... To pretend I know who we're talking about. Yeah, and you're doing a good job so far. I wasn't going to call you out, so <laughs> it's fine. I'll, I'll inform you after we talk who he is. It's okay, fine. Okay. Muse, you know who he is. I'm proud of you. That's good. Slot, what's happening? Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, who's next? <laughs> Mars? Is it me? It can be. Wow. It can be you. Wow. 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 <laughs> Yeah, right there. <laughs> no, so, no, I am not. You know I'm not. All right, continue. <laughs> We're going to talk about a couple of quick tips and tricks for your stream overlay, right? Meow. Right, yeah. meow. Ah, there you, you go. To, you gotta be kidding me, right, meow? Anyway. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so, um, this is just a couple of like tips and tricks that I've like I've asked people. I found a couple of articles on this. Um, I know a lot of people have you know, different questions as to what they want on their overlay. I know a lot of us redo them literally constantly, especially if you're me. Um, <laughs> I find like a new overlay like every week that I'm just like, wow, that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just, I'll just put it on my, put it on my stream and, and test it out. Um, but before I go into any of the tips, what do you guys like to have in your overlay? What do you guys like to prioritize? Go. <laughs> Musy, go first, mostly because I'm still thinking. So um, I just, I go. like, prefer a clean simple overlay um whether it's on mine or even the ones i like to watch i've seen some people that have like five million things and like if it doesn't the game for whatever reason the aspect ratio doesn't match mm -hmm. like they'll have like this ton of stuff off to the side and like it's super distracting so for me i just love clean simple um as far as like information i kind of like i'm off and on with having chat roll on screen um mm -hmm. i think there's a time and place for it mm -hmm. um and also um speaking of overlays eddie yeah eddie uh, um eh? our overlay. Ours, ours went away oh um it did not go <laughs> away it is like, just off thank you very much <laughs> actually i think it's super important <laughs> to make sure that like you have the recognition of the people that are supporting you so new follows new subs if you're an affiliate or partner you know um tips the biddies that type of thing i think it's important to have that stuff but it, it i don't like it shouldn't be like 90 percent of your screen in my mm -hmm. opinion mm -hmm. did that give you enough time to think eddie maybe more, possibly off no 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 i'm good i'm good i'm good i'm good okay. i just can't type and talk at the same time Hello, I'm back. Uh, yeah, so uh, much like Musi, I prefer um, a clean overlay. I'm always a fan of less is better, less is more. Um, you guys have seen my stream. Um, I adopted the green screen because I wanted to give it a more clean look. I didn't want the camera box. Um, I just have my follows. I don't even think I have bits up there. I think it's follows, subs, and donations. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't like a lot of clutter on the screen as well. Um, a lot of people watch Twitch on mobile, so if you've got a small screen, I think it's better to not have a lot of stuff on that screen if you're watching on the phone or a tablet. Um, I don't have the chat. The only time I have chat on on my on my overlay is on my IRL screen, 
when I'm actually there to see it and, you know, there's really nothing else for anyone to look at. So I'm like, screw it, put it up there. But other than that, um, I don't really like a lot of stuff on the screen. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that seems to be the general consensus of not having a lot on your screen, trying to keep it as clean and simple as possible. Um, obviously, it depends on what kind of stream you're doing. So if you're doing like a regular gaming stream, some people like to just have the game. Some people go no overlay. Some people go very, very minimalistic. Some people like to have literally a little bit of everything on their screens. Um, some people that are doing speed running will have that giant chunk on the left side with their um, their timer. What is the timer, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, they have and the button the, presses. Splits. Splits. That's yeah. the word I was looking for. Um, they'll have that on their left-hand side, and they'll usually take the game and they'll minim minimalize it to, like, one portion of the screen and then have, like, a like a big L kind of shape or just, just a chunk on the left side or right side of their, again, timer and their camera. Um, right. But the general consensus is usually trying to keep it as clean as possible. Um the first tip that I have was to pay attention to the focus of your stream. So if you want your stream to focus on, um, you know, entertainment, or if you want it to be focused on skills, some people say when you're trying to focus on the skill of the game, don't try to overcrowd your screen with a lot of stuff because no one will be able to see how you're even playing. Um, or even if you're doing it for, you know, entertainment purposes, some people like to have a bunch of stuff on their screen to make it look cute or make it to look very um, visually pleasing. Some people have you know, bits that fly across the screen. They'll have emotes that fly across the screen. It's honestly just dependent upon what you want your stream to look like. Um, they want uh, The tip was to prioritize your overlay so that the most important elements get the most exposure. So like Mew says, you want to obviously hype up the people that are supporting you. So new follows, new subs, new donations, new bits. Um, if they have a thing for that on slabs for bits and everything. Um, if that's something that they always tell you that you should prioritize is again, you want to give back to your community what they're giving to you. And as a streamer, sometimes the only way you can do that is just through recognition. So they said that that is something that you should definitely always have on your screen if you are going to do a very minimalistic overlay. Um, they say to try and not to make your cam look very crazy. So I know there are some animated scenes, animated overlays on slobs. Some of them are very over the top and will kind of sometimes draw your eye away from the game. Um, if it's just like a like a light that travels around the uh, around the border, people usually find that okay. But sometimes people they see if it's flashing, if there's like flames coming out of it, if you know it's like shooting things across the screen, it's gonna really take away from your gameplay. Because um, again, you're the whole point of your stream. Sometimes if you know a lot of people come to the stream to see you, but if you are going to stream games because you're not you know an IRL streamer or you're not doing music or you're not doing something that doesn't have anything else for them to look at that's okay but if you're going to stream a game obviously you want them to also watch the game at the same time um what's what else did i have here i had a couple things tip number two is ratios um it says there's no universal rule of um applying to all circumstances obviously this depends again on what you're doing um but never sacrifice the quality of your stream for the size of your overlay. So if you want your overlay to be super, super big, make sure it looks well blown up, make sure it's not pixelated, make sure it's not fuzzy, make sure your camera's not fuzzy, make sure your, you know, your emotes, if they fly across the screen, aren't fuzzy, make sure that everything has a very high quality because if you're going to overload your overlay with a bunch of extra features, you wanna make sure that they also look well. Um, because again, you don't wanna have your game in the background looking sharp as ever and then everything else looks a little lackluster um so make sure your game feed webcams images and fonts all maintain proper ratios and don't get um stretched out just to fit the design of your overlay again there's a bunch of free overlays on slobs you can google overlays there's a bunch of dub like artists make sure that they have the right um dimensions of your screen if you're going to pay someone to do your art make sure that everything just looks nice and crisp and clean um, again, so that also doesn't take away from your gameplay in a negative aspect. Um, color palette, make sure everything is kind of matching. Um, <laughs> if you're going to have like your, your, your camera be red and your thing at the bottom where it says like bit leader or something be blue and have green up in the top right corner, it's probably going to look pretty janky and pretty clashy. Um, so they say to always have some kind of color scheme that you go with. If you have a general over overall theme, like like for me, like I have like a very um purple, yeah, 
purple galaxy <laughs> kind of background. So anything that matches with purples and reds and pinks and stuff that I have in my artwork, I like to incorporate onto my stream. So I picked one color, not not 12, I picked one color and went with that for my overlay. Um, so if you have a, you know an art piece that has a bunch of blues in it, pick one color of blue and go with that with your overlay. Just try and pick like the most eye-catching color that, of course, you want it to look like, and then pick it for your overlay so that, again, it doesn't look like it's just a mashup of a bunch of different things. Especially if you Makes are sense. going to not have a minimalistic approach to it. If you're going to have, sometimes they have, some people have little characters that walk across the bottom of their stream. You don't want to take <laughs> away from those things by people being like, oh God, there's there's just so much on on your screen. Because you might, you might not have a lot on your screen. You might just have that little bar at the bottom in your camera. But if they're two different colors, it looks like two very big pieces of your screen because they're not they're not meshing together very well. Right. So the ratio of that and the color palette of that was also a very big tip that people had. Um, the next one was KISS for keep it simple, stupid. Um, general rule of thumb when designing no, your overlay. Is... Sorry. Right. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially when it comes to fonts, don't go font crazy. Um, you want it to be easy to read. You want it to be, you know, pleasing to the eye. Don't use Comic Sans. No one likes Comic Sans. I'm sorry. It's that, that's just a personal <laughs> thing. Don't, wow. don't use Comic Sans. Wow. Please don't use Comic Sans. That's wow. nonsense. There's like, a, there's like a lot of threads underneath here. That's just like, LOL, those people that use Comic Sans. It's just like, I feel that. I feel that. Don't use Comic Sans. <laughs> what about Impact? Um, If you want to keep it super short together, just... General rule of thumb is just make sure that your font is legible. Make sure it's, you know, people can read it. Make sure that it's easy to read. People don't have to strain their eyes, especially again, like Eddie said on mobile, the screen's really super tiny. So you want to make sure that you can read it on that tiny, itty bitty screen because you got, you know, tiny, itty bitty little space on your screen. Tiny. I like how oh, wow, it's all awful. Awful. No comic sans. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of cool fan, uh, fonts out there on the internet. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can act on. If you like to Photoshop your own overlays, they have free brushes that you can use for fonts. They have free fonts that you can just download themselves and use it as a text tool. Um, if you want variety, you can change thickness, italics, but they usually say just try and keep something that's evenly spaced. Again, try and keep the color very minimal because if you're going to have like, you know, blue on red, that's probably going to be super hard for a lot of people to read, especially, you know, you got to keep, you know, news is going to get into accessibility, but there's people out there that are colorblind. They're probably not going to be able to read your screen very well if you have too many colors going on, or if you have the font something that's so polar opposite of what your overlay actually is. Um, mm -hmm. Sponsors, logos, and social placement buttons. So um, this last little point, um, simplicity equals velocity, and we want your viewers to land on your channel. Understand that they want to watch it and make the decision to stay as quickly as possible. So if you're going to have logos on there, icons on there, um, just make sure it's organized and it's grouped together. There is a really cool tool on Slobs called a sponsor banner. Um, you can add a bunch of little different images and actually have them come in the screen. They could bounce on the screen. They could just like pop up on the screen. They can fade in on the screen. There's a, actually Bojangle showed me how to use it. And then me and Eddie were looking at it the other day. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that you can add on there to have like a little sponsor banner and they you can make it stay on the screen for a certain amount of time you can make it go away from the screen it's just a little thing that you can like show you know if you're sponsored or you know you can put the twitch crew logo on there i personally have that on there um you can mm -hmm. have your own art on there to pop up on there um mm -hmm. it's also just another way it's like visually pleasing as like a little cool little widget in the top corner of your screen because that again will also catch someone's eye and then someone could be like oh well what's twitch crew or oh who did your art or Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you're you're sponsored by AK Racing or what have you. Um, that's just another cool little way to add a little bit of flair to your screen without overloading it with too much. Right. Um, right. Do, 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 do. Don't assume that your overlay looks good. This is another thing that we as streamers have to do in general. You know, we always encourage people to watch their own VODs. Go back and look at yourself live. If you if you don't like the look of your overlay, chances are your viewers don't like them either. Your overlay is uh, trash. <laughs> and not even that, they, they might really like it, but if you're not happy with it, just like I say in every single crew talk we ever have, if you're not happy with it, change it. Change it so you are happy with it. Um, again, it's got to be something that you're happy with at the end of the day. You know, sure, your viewers' opinions matter, but t you have to keep them in line 
with what you want your channel to look like again your your branding so to speak so if you want to have a crazy overlay and you're totally cool with that go ahead and have a crazy overlay because some people are gonna be like oh my god this person is super fun and this person's look wacky at they, look at the, yeah look at all the stuff this person has on their screen or you know all that kind of stuff <laughs> <laughs> words words are just not they're not on my side today you know um, um. So there is actually, I guess, a website, if you Google it, called Twitch Overlay, that they have some overlays for around like 10 to $30. Again, you can have an artist do it for you. There's a bunch of artists on Fiverr. We have artists in Twitch through ourselves. You could do a hybrid kind of thing. You can have someone work on one piece of your overlay. You can have one person work on another one. Um, and I think a really smart tool that I actually, um, I saw Bloodhaven doing is for every single game that he plays, he has a different scene. And what I mean by this is if he's playing Rocket League, he will have his scene reorganized so that it's not covering up the the boost bar at the bottom. Or if he's playing, I, I know he doesn't play Siege, but if he was to play Siege, he'd make Should sure that something wasn't, wasn't across the top that it would block where the operators were. So it's just like, you got to be aware of what game you're playing as well, because sometimes your overlay might block really key elements that viewers might want to look at. I'm so bad um, at that. <laughs> I'm so bad at that. Sometimes I don't think about it either. But like, say in Siege, when you're on that death cam, and on the on the left side of the screen, it'll show you who's you know who's still alive, what the operator is, what they're holding, and your camera's on that side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yep. it kind of takes away from the screen because viewers are just like, oh well, you know, what like, what's that? What what, do you, what what are you doing? Or when you're choosing an operator and your camera is covering up half the operators, and someone who might not know what Siege is might not know where any of that's you know might want to actually look at that stuff. So something that I thought was really cool that he did was, you know, have a different scene for everything because again, you might want to highlight different parts of the game that, you know, your viewers might find very crucial to the gameplay. Um, right. right. I don't know if anyone was adding anything in chat because I wasn't reading. Um, but uh, they're talking about font. Everyone was uh, repping their uh, house font, house crayon. Glutamite did comment, uh, you know, for people that have done art, certain colors draw the eyes to it. Mm -hmm. So if you, too many eye-popping colors can be hard for people to focus on gameplay. That's exactly. a good point. That's a good point. Exactly. Like, you guys have seen my overlay. Like, I I have two basic colors. Like, red's my pr primary go-to color and mm -hmm. kind of like a dark gray. So, like, my overlay, the background's gray and it's a bright red on top. So, like, that pops out and it's easy to see. Um, you know, that's that's kind of the approach I take. So, um, once again, the whole less is less is more type thing. But mm -hmm. um, I've seen some really – there's some really cool and colorful, bright um, overlays that you can get through slobs that look really nice that do have a lot of clarity, clarity to them too. Um, another thing I did to mine, um, it's an overlay from slobs, but I added my own font to it. Um, I changed the default font that it had, changed the color like I just said, um, and made it match all, those, all the other stuff in my stream. So there's a lot of stuff you can do to, to kind of customize it and make it your own. Um, maybe you like the way the overlay looks, but you don't like the color Then you can always, um, you know, if you're talking about like the webcam frame and stuff like that, that might take a little, um, some Photoshop skills or something like that, that you might not, that you might need. I don't have those skills, but little mm -hmm. things like the, the font or stuff like that, you can, you can change to kind of make it your own. So, yeah. So slobs actually in their software, I can't speak for regular OBS cause I've never used it for slobs has an actual like um tab where you can look at all their overlays they have different widgets mm -hmm. and everything um you can actually choose the overlay by color so like again for me with the galaxy theme i can do purples or pinks or you know reds or whatever really is in my artwork that i want to choose um right. i i went with red so i chose an overlay i and again you don't have to stick to the entirety of the overlay so some of the overlays have an entire border on the screen. Some of them have different key elements that they use. Some have a top bar and a bottom bar. Some have chat on screen. I don't personally like to have my chat on screen. Same. Um, so like I can turn that off or like the top bar, if I don't like it, I can turn that off. And sometimes with the overlay, if you like something that's on the bottom of the screen but want to put it on the top, you can also right click on the editor and actually transform it yourself and flip it um, horizontally or vertically wherever you want to place it on your screen. Um, all this stuff obviously just comes with like practice, playing around with it. And honestly, there's there's a crap ton of people in TC that if you just go, hey, can you come check out my stream just to see if my overlay looks good? Someone's going to be like, yeah, sure. Or, you know, you could do a test stream. I know a couple of people did test streams just to see if their audio sounded good. Um, again, this is stuff that, you know, sure, you're probably worried about your viewer numbers or your average because you're going, you're going live for a stream. Jump in a Discord call. Share your screen with them. Um, I did that with Eddie 
literally two days ago, I was like, hey, how does this look? Does this look better over here? Does this look okay if I remove this? Again, right. there's a, plenty of people in TC that are willing to do that for you. Don't be afraid to call literally anybody and be like, hey, can you just check this out? Because again, we're all here to support one another. We're all here to say, you know, like, hey, that looks good or, and be honest or like, hey, maybe that might look better over there or, right. you know, like what me and Bojangles does is like, oh, maybe may, try, like, try this color just to see if you like it and if you don't like it, then you know that you like the first one because sometimes an outside perspective really does help. Yep, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Even if it's, uh, uh, you know, like in the case of uh, me and Mars, she wasn't listening to anything I was saying. She was just kind of talking to herself and I was just <laughs> there to make it feel like she had someone to talk to. Sometimes that's all you much. need to. So, you know, whatever works. Yeah, like, like if, you're, <laughs> if you're like me, it's like you always have like a vision, but you just need confirmation. Right. Like, Exactly. Just, it depends yeah. on what you want. If you have a vision for your stream, go for it. But it, it doesn't hurt to have an opinion on on the outside or, you know, again, ch check your VODs. See see if it looks good to you when you're live because it can look great to you when you're not live, but it can look like crap to you when you're actually playing a game. Yep. So that is definitely something <clears throat> to um to keep in mind. Yep. That's all I have. Awesome. That's really it. Super That's good. simple. Simple. <laughs> Simple's better. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> okay, so uh, before we go into Muse's topic here, I think uh, we'll go ahead and we will show our feature member video. Uh, give me it was uh, it is Eric the Bearded, uh, my man, uh, super positive, awesome guy. Uh, give me a second here um, because my all my scenes and everything are messed up, so I'll have to uh, show it the same way I showed the Mario video, which means. Um, Turning off all these bad boys and uh, just putting it right over top. Nothing but high, nothing but the uh, highest quality here. So next tip: make sure your overlays are prepared before you hush go. yourself. Hush <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's loud. Oh God. There we go. <laughs> He's so happy. <laughs> oh the pre-green screen look look at that <laughs> oh my god that laugh the laugh's amazing <laughs> oh okay i like that the floating head look laugh i've ever heard that was yeah <laughs> Yeah, everyone says I have a good laugh. That is that is a good laugh. Eric's laugh, that is a good laugh. That's amazing. Is this Far Cry? Oh <laughs> There it is again. <laughs> wow. Yeah, shot. Awesome. Once again, uh, congrats to Eric DeBearded, which was uh, he was our feature member of the week. And before everyone yells at me, haha, they are on, I think, <laughs> maybe, yes, possibly, except for they're not where they need to be. Hero, okay, yep. So, Yay! all right. So um, next, we've got <laughs> Musi, and she is going to talk about some gaming accessibility. Musi, take it away. All right, thank you. Um, I want to open it up by saying, first of all, I'm what they call neurotypical. Um, I have no disability, so for me, I don't. I'm not coming from a place of experience, um, rather, the place of advocacy and education. This is something that is um, super important to me. Um, some of you may not know, but I have worked with people with different disabilities with instruments, and so adapting to um, make it so that they can play different instruments um, has been something that I've done. And since gaming is also an interest of mine, I thought, well, it's just a good fit. So anyway, um, trying to move closer as well to my mic. Eddie, you can right click Actually, on her video and turn her. It's, it's it worth does. it. It's worth it. <laughs> right clicking, nothing's happening. You no, like me. You, 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 can, you can still exit full screen. Just right-click on her name and then drag the, the volume bar. All right, hold on. Hold on. Please hold. Please hold. hold. Please. 
This is important because this it's is not an normally important topic. Me. All right, we're going to blow everyone's eardrums out. Ah. There we go. All right, continue. Free him and I really wanted to be a shit and just um, act like I was talking. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> I mean, feel free to be a shit. This is a shit-free zone. So. Anyway. Um, okay, sorry, guys. So, accessibility. I'm going to be that person that uses the word itself to define it. <laughs> but accessibility, basically, it literally means having the ability to access something. So that can be um, anything, whether it's content on the internet, checking, you know, their email or, you know, checking out the latest video on YouTube, watching streams, play games, anything like that. Um, and why it's important is because it is all based off of quality of life. Everybody plays games for basically the same reason, to have fun, to escape, to explore new worlds, new stories, new characters, and just have that enjoyment. So it's all about quality of life. Now, the issue is there's a lot of games and a lot of equipment that is not friendly to people generally. And it can be because of a physical disability. Um, it could be because of an injury that they've had. Um, you know, maybe they're sensitive to flashing lights on screen, they're colorblind, um, they may be blind or low vision, deaf or hard of hearing. There's lots of different ways that something could be inaccessible to gamers. But there's a lot of disabled gamers out there and that's really cool um, because it just goes to show how powerful games can be that everybody wants to be part of it. And there's a lot of different ways that tech and developers are starting to kind of get on board. We're not anywhere near where we should be, but at least there is some stuff starting to be out there. That being said, um, I wanted to give you guys some ideas of some of the different like tech that's out there because there's a lot of different things that, you know, some can't use traditional mouse and keyboard if they're on PC. Some can't use controllers in the traditional sense. Um, they may be, you know, a paraplegic and not be able to use their limbs, period. And they can still game. And I'll show you some really cool equipment that exists that allows them to do that. Um, one thing that is out there is um, some eye tracking software and equipment. It's not super reliable at this point. Um, there's a lot of hype around it and people who don't have to use it, um, you know, they think it's great, but um, it doesn't track as well as it could. But um, it's, it's at least something, it's a start. Um, Jono says he knows for a fact he can't play some games because of seizures and flashing lights. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, there's a lot of different things that can be done and I'll come back around to colorblind flashing lights and stuff options within games um there um I'll show the joysticks I have my notes I promise I'm organized but I'm not organized at the same time <laughs> um <Balance. laughs> exactly. VR is actually a really cool thing that's out there um not just for the immersion um but it there's actually a hospital in Colorado, Craig Hospital. Um, they are using assistive technology and VR to help their patients in the healing process. Um, so it gives them an opportunity to again <laughs> explore worlds. I watched a video of one patient that they were <clears throat> um, kind of showing what the whole thing was about. And that had to do with um, that... Uh, Sorry, got distracted. No, you're fine. He got to go scuba diving, and that was something that he would probably never get to. That's awesome. Do in real that's, life. that's really so, cool. That's really cool. And the cool. thing was, he was quadriplegic, so the um, the gal put the headset on him, and they were able to put the controllers so that he he had a little bit of movement in his hands, um, and so he could push the button so that he could move through the world and see stuff. Um, so that's something that it, it really helped. And they talked about how they've had patients who traditional therapies and approaches were not working. 
and that they brought in video games for this particular patient and like everything changed. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, so this, that and it's a perfect example of why this is important. Mm-hmm. Um, because for a lot of people, gaming is life. And um, if you're suddenly in a point where you can't game anymore, it can be very, very depressing. Absolutely. Um, and something that I never really thought about before was gaming um, for those who are blind or deaf. Um, there's actually some developers out there that are, are making games specifically for blind people. The problem is they simplify them. They like walk them step by step through it. So they miss the exploration, the story, because they're being told how to move through it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um you know, and they will adapt some of the games to to that. So, you know, perhaps they, they um, what was one of them? There was a triple A game that was mentioned. I want to say it was like Witcher or something, but there's a lot of exploration in the Witcher yeah. series. That's like and, a thing. Yeah. 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 And so like Absolutely. you're being told, okay, go left here. Like that takes away from exploring, understanding, like getting that experience of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a really awesome guy... Um, he's a PhD candidate in computer science in at Columbia, and he developed this awesome thing that he calls the Racing Auditory Display, and it is an interface that developers can put into racing games, and it has um, so- two different sonification techniques, so sound cues, and it lets them know when those turns are coming up, so they know which way they're going can visualize that in their mind and Mm -hmm. they know and the other thing is there's a sound slider so they know their speed their trajectory what they need to do to stay in the track and what is even cooler is that they of course since this is a program study at a university they tested blind with um uh sight individuals with sight um, mm-hmm. that are casual gamers and the blind gamers and the casual gamers were like neck and neck for speed times on the, Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's very cool. So, um, it gives them more freedom within the racing game, which is so mm-hmm. cool. Um, and even some credibility that their software is working. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's a thing called Wooger, W O O J E R Wooger. Wooger. It's a vest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's um, it's meant more for more immersion within VR. But for deaf gamers, it can mean a lot because what it has, it has eight haptic spots on it. Um, there's two upper back, two lower back, um, two that come around to the front side of the waist, and then two in the front here by the shoulders. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it it provides that sound reinforcement. So like if you're going through, you know, playing it like a horror game and a door slam shut, you can actually feel oh goodness that sound. Oh yeah, God, that'd be awful. Yeah, if he has heart attacks. <laughs> imagine him wearing this vest. Um, <laughs> Yikes! The haptic. That's the, I mean that's that's awesome though. Like the haptic feedback to like it's that's yeah that's cutting edge. They Sorry, actually just added the haptic feedback in one of the new uh, razor headsets too. Um, obviously that wouldn't really make sense for someone who's hearing impaired, but they're actually starting to add like those, I guess, like, what would you call it? The 4d kind yeah. of feels mm-hmm. to the gaming, which a lot of people are super stoked about. Mm-hmm. So I thought you that, know, was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Really yeah. awesome mm-hmm. that they're doing things like that. Yeah. Um, like I said, there's not, it's disappointing what's out there, but at the same time, there are a lot of people that are working really hard to try to increase. Um, so now I'll show you some of the different things that are out there um let me bounce around here i'll have eddie have me go full screen yeah i think what we'll do is i think if no that won't work i was gonna say if me and mars turn off our cameras and it would fill up the full screen but that's not gonna work so my camera just sounds fuzzy <laughs> just double click on me and yeah just uh, double click on her and ha! hello oh hold on please hold <laughs> okay holding Three. there we go okay so this first Three. thing is what they call the joust 3 um and it I'm little. Sorry. Is... <laughs> Eddie in the middle of the screen. Uh, oh my sorry. goodness. 
I'm burping, excuse me. Okay, um, so this Joust 3 is it's a very advanced system. Um, it has, um, it's a, it is plug and play, it's joystick operated, but it has a mouth, cheek, chin, or tongue um, utilization for people who do not have mobility in their arms. They also, wow. okay. um, you can sip and puff to right click, left click, double click, however you set it up. Um, nice. In the corner, it's really tiny, um, but there's, he actually was streaming. He, it doesn't look like he streamed in quite a while, mm -hmm. um, but he is a gamer. He had, I believe it was a, an accident on a construction site. Okay. If I recall correctly, mm -hmm. that left him um, paralyzed. And um, his name is No Hands Ken. And he this he uses this system, and he okay. just basically to move the mouse around. He can move his head, and to double click, like I said, you can either sip um, from the straw or puff into it, depending on how you have it set up. That wouldn't to... work with my heavy breathing during siege, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Might make for some interesting shots. It'd be funny. Um, <laughs> the downside to this, guys, is this is a fifteen hundred dollar piece of equipment. Oh wow. Whew. Yeah. Um, so that, that's so unfortunate, though, because these people obviously did not choose to have these things be, you know, be their, you know, be their life, so to speak. And it's it's not as easy as us just going to the store and buying a mouse, buying a keyboard, you know. These, exactly. This, that's so, like that's so expensive. That's basically a PC right there. Like that's super expensive. It is. Yep. Wow. Exactly. Which, which sucks because I mean it's like you know like that's. <laughs> You you should be able to have access to this stuff at a reasonable price. That's like one more extra yeah. hurdle that that you that, that's unfortunate, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, you know, unfortunately, um, it is I say a small part of the gaming population, but hopefully it will become a more growing part as these things become more wide known and knowledgeable. Maybe there will be cheaper ways to make them, so you know, um, the average Joe can be able to afford them. Um, so, well, sorry, part of that too is just that whole concept of um you know industry and if there's more people producing things mm -hmm. the cost will come down as well and that is something right. i saw with the new xbox demand. controller um which i'll i'll show here in a second too mm -hmm. but they're talking about how um that is something that needs to be done and it's only 100 bucks so imagine this one being at 1500 wow yeah this one here's called the quad stick it has three versions there's the FPS, the Singleton, and the original. Um, it's set up very similar to the uh, Joust is, um, in that you know there's the joystick. Um, the FPS has four sip puff pressure sensors and a lip position sensor, um, which can be assigned to output to any game controller button oh, um, nice. or to any mouse movement button, keyboard key, whatever you can basically design it to match whatever controller keyboard mouse you're using or needing to use the singleton the one in the middle it's um sit just has the one sip and puff so it has a little less functionality okay. to it um mm -hmm. and then the original is basically like the first one the fps but it's a little bit um, lower cost and it's easier to move the joystick okay um these start at about 400 dollars and go up from there wow Oof. so again Better, but still not great. I'm sure the technology right. must be super hard to make in such a compact thing, though. Right. You know, right. to be able to not only recognize movement, but recognize, you know, I guess, like, you know, wind intake and outtake and just... Right, and like you said, the size of it. Super advanced, but, like, my thought process is if these people are having a hard time gaming, obviously, probably some of them can't work because of their disability. So right, So how exactly. can we expect I mean... them to afford these things? Exactly. They're, mm -hmm. they're on, you know, social security, most likely. Mm -hmm. And um, they only get so much a month. So right, right. It can be it can be a lot. Um, this is um, a really cool controller system um, that actually Eric. Yeah, I was going to say Eric um, uses a scuff. Yep. He mm -hmm. does use a scuff. Mm -hmm. And this is just the backside of one of them. I just showed it because it has this through the PlayStation. Um, you can see, you know, it's, it's your typical PS4 mm -hmm. um, controller, but they've adjusted it to have those paddles on the back. Um, mm. And you can actually do 
a lot. It'll show here, you know, you can make it so that there's a longer length in those thumbsticks. Mm -hmm. So if you need that for mobility within your hands and being able to play. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge one as well. Mm -hmm. um, and these ones, I'm trying to remember, these aren't as bad. They're what, um, $170. Not great, right. but right. not bad. I mean, you're getting a, little a bit custom. more affordable. Yeah. It's well, a it's inter affordable and you're getting customized to what you need. Right. Absolutely. Right. Well, I mean, I think what the Xbox Elite controller goes for like 150, I think like something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because I know and we're talking about accessibility for people who um, can't game the traditional way. But it's interesting because a lot of gamers that don't have access accessibility issues use a scuff controller. Um, like I don't know if anyone know who Nick Mertz, uh, Nick Mertz, the Fortnite streamer, he uses a scuff controller because... Yeah, he has one. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because I mean, essentially, yeah. like when you're playing a game like Fortnite, you've got four extra buttons, right, to like be able to like build and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's it's interesting that it's it's finding popularity amongst um, um, I, I guess you would call that the, the the typical gaming crowd. I guess I don't know what yeah. the what, how exactly I'd say that, but um. but even even along with this stuff, like because um, I was looking at, up a couple stuff myself like a couple of months ago, um, just like looking at like our basic keyboard and mouse like really isn't healthy for how we use them either so right a lot of right people who do this very often get are getting like carpal tunnel and stuff because they're really not built for us to be do, using in the way that we are right right, right. um which That's is why true. i think a lot of people that you say don't have accessibility issues go with stuff gaming because mm -hmm. again a lot of the stuff on there are more you know what would they call mm -hmm. it like ergonomically comfortable with your right more you know, ergonomic friendly support. yeah yeah right right so yeah. go ahead exactly Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you're good. Um, this is that the new Xbox adaptive controller. It just came out not long ago. Um, it's awesome the fact that we have a big company like Microsoft that is working to put together something like this to provide accessibility to people. Absolutely. Um, it's a hundred dollars. You can connect. Um, I don't know if it shows further down. Yeah, you can connect and set it up so that you can have switches and other little controllers oh, whatever cool. you need oh, that's so to cool. um, mm -hmm. allow for those functions. So um, it's basically if you taking the one, controller right. and expanding it out and so that you can have the different switches and mm -hmm. and make it easier. That's um, neat. Looks like a weed so truck. It's a good, yeah. It's a good first step, to be honest. Um, but again, $100 is no small chunk of money for a lot no. of people yeah no um, and i saw a lot of disabled gamers talking about that you know it'd be really nice if other big companies will start doing this to help level out that price because right now this mm -hmm. is the only thing of its kind basically mm -hmm. right and like so a, like a console game right mm -hmm. yeah yep um another this is so a lot of this controllers can be used on pc obviously um, but not everybody wants to use a controller. And so there are different types of mice. This is an example of a virtual oh, cool. mouse. Mm -hmm. And it puts that hand into more of that handshake position um, mm -hmm. for people who maybe had injuries that it's painful to move. Right. If, if they don't hand. have the rotation or the mobility yeah, to rotate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Issues can be mm -hmm. pretty painful. And as like Mars was saying too, it's not exactly the way we sit and play for hours on end is not exactly good on us. We get carpal right. tunnel too. Mm -hmm. um so but if you look at that mouse if you think about most of our mice we have several buttons that allow us to do multiple things just like with a joystick mm -hmm. not as easy for something like this we have they have the scroll wheel right and left click there may be a button here you know and of course it's going to depend on the model mm -hmm. but even there that's a lot of movement within that arm Right. And it can still cause a lot of wear um, mm -hmm. and exhaustion. So right. It's, it's still not a perfect thing. Um, I guess the nice thing about these is you can get cheap ones, as, you know, as, as low as fifteen bucks. Not oh wow. Quality. But, but again, they're still not built for gaming. That's exactly. Right. It's for browsing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's for everyday just computer use. Now, does that have a does does that have the standard um, optic eye on the bottom that you can move it that you can move it across a mouse pad? Basically, it's just so. like in a vertical. Yeah. Okay. The only yeah, problem is, is some of these also don't allow you to use two buttons at once. So, like in Siege, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to aim and shoot at the same time. Yep. Uh, 
yeah, yeah. because again because they're they're built more so for web browsing for, right not even just for web browsing but also just because they're not they're not built for people that don't have accessibility issues are usually built more towards the people that do that mm -hmm. they're not they're not thinking of that you know i guess them being able to be it being able to hit two buttons at the same time but also again like like, like that one especially that you're showing use it's not mm -hmm. again like you said it's, it's built more for browsing so it's not going to be able to, to it's not just it's just not going to be able to keep up with what like what we do right our, right exactly intense pc I mean, gaming basically exactly mm -hmm. if you if even just casual gamers like playing siege we often have to have those buttons you know two buttons at a time mm -hmm. um but if you look at some of those other games or like people who play mmos who have macro set up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and there's like 30 different functions that they may be pressing at any given time or whatever those eight button on the side mice <laughs> exactly oh boy that's the um, so many buttons <laughs> it makes it really hard for people who, to be able to enjoy Mm -hmm. um there's let's see there's also um trigger modifications that can be added um there's people out there making single-handed xbox controllers but that's going to be 350 bucks right there uh, um and oof. basically they'll design it to whichever hand is your good hand and they'll extend the um extend it out on that side so it's easier to hang on to okay um so there's there's stuff out there but that's basically it is some variation of something that you've seen here tonight. Um, I think what that's one of the biggest issues, biggest issues with these things is because every every accessibility and disability are so different. Exactly. The reason they're so expensive is because everything pretty much has to be custom made. Mm -hmm. Because there's, yeah, there's not no... there's no widespread across the board like this is for this, this is for that, this is for that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and plus, a lot of these people who are designing this stuff don't have to worry about true functionality they look at it and they're like oh this will work mm -hmm. but then they don't necessarily test it out or know firsthand mm -hmm. the benefits or the downsides to that particular thing um mm -hmm. thank you Jono. yeah the woodger is really cool so that's awesome um so be sure to check that out in pics um hold on i'm on the wrong thing there we go mm. um there are some games out there. This one's called The Pass Way of the Passive Fist. It's available, as you see here, Xbox, PlayStation, Steam. And it is a brawler. And the cool thing with this game here, as the video kind of plays, you can kind of see some action from it. Um, you can remap every control in this game. So no matter what the movement is, you can remap it to what works for you. It has a setting. You can do one-handed play. You can adjust the difficulty to match what you need it to be. And this is a game that they took specific attention to people who have vision issues, whether it's trouble seeing. You see mm -hmm. all the colors are very clear. Yeah, um, yeah. And the flashing lights, if you look when he's doing his punching and stuff, the flashes are not big. They're not right, going they're, to be something they're very that triggers key. anything for someone. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one game out there that has been... Um, recently released that is you know the, the developers had that in mind for players. very cool there's a game called celeste um i believe it's a platformer it has mm -hmm. an assist mode in it that can um you can set it so you're invincible that way you don't have to worry about um dying every two seconds or whatever because it looks like a very difficult platformer too. It's not like one of those mm -hmm. really easy ones. Mm -hmm. You can also put slow mode in so you can slow it down so that you can respond um, in, a, in a more timely manner for what works for you, which is really awesome. Um, this is Minecraft, but mm -hmm. it's what they call iMine. Um, Special Effect UK, um, a lot of people probably are familiar with Able Gamers. Special effect is basically the same thing, but in the UK, they work with families, um, their charity okay. organization, who provides different controllers for disabled families and, and individuals. What you're seeing here with iMind, they worked with, and it's not official with mine, with um, Microsoft. I was going to say with Minecraft. Good job, me. Um, <laughs> but you'll see what you see here is two different versions of it that they have. They have the simplified version, which is on top. And then they have the more um, in-depth version. And this 
is used with some of that eye tracking software that I was talking about. You look at it. Um, so for example, if you want to move forward, you look at this one, you get a little pie chart <laughs> that shows oh, up. Oh, cool. And then you will just move, keep moving forward um, until you tell it to stop. You have attack, you know, you can, you can mine with stuff. In the more advanced version, you can do more of the building, you can ride than the mine carts. Um, so it's really opened up the world of Minecraft um, for people because... That's awesome. You're able that's to cool, use yeah. That. yeah, something that's kind of cool. Have um, you found any games that allow you to change the flashing from instead of like a bright white light to like a black screen instead? I mm -hmm. really haven't seen a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I know... Not for the flashing, but for the colorblind, Overwatch has implemented a, a colorblind mode. Okay. So the individual can go in and change the team colors so that they can actually see them. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Really cool. So if that's you, awesome. Any of you, I popped in there last night and was looking at it. So if any of you have Overwatch, you can go into your settings and look at it. And it's not like it's this or this. Like you can actually go in and pick mm -hmm. the color. That's and, super um, cool. So it makes it better because some people... Colorblind isn't exactly the same for all people. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you can be partially so, colorblind or, or there's like a, you know, like a, this, is, this is a scale of it, essentially. Exactly. So. Um, two images I want to show you guys, and then I'll bring my goofy face back to visit with you. Which three? Um, it's girl. Maggie points, points out that most games' colorblind modes are terrible, which is true, because a lot of them kind of do the average. and that, But I've seen a lot of good comments about Overwatches. I think it'd be um, cool if they let you adjust it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like if they I, had since I don't know, I don't. Mode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have that. Like for me, I don't have that, um, that view. So I don't know mm -hmm. what the difference would be. Um, mm -hmm. Of course. It's, it's one of them that has worked. Maggie, have you tried playing with the colorblind mode in Overwatch? He says he's partially colorblind. Oh, you're so semi-colorblind. From experience. Wow. Yeah, and I know it's because they're just going for that kind of that middle of the road, which doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, he's never tried it. Okay. I saw actually just last night a tweet from a person who was super stoked by the new colorblind mode in Overwatch. So, might be something to look at. I don't know. Sometimes um, it destroys the graphics, he says, if you try the colorblind mode on X757. Yeah, it, it kind of colors them out, you know, and it destroys it. Well, do you think it would cost them more? Like, I don't, I, I don't know anything about like creating video games, but obviously they would have to basically transform the entire game, especially like if I said if they implemented a like a scaling system to what you know to be able to have, like you said, every colorblind is different to have them be able to choose what's the best fit for them. Um, right. Would it cost them like a lot of money to implement something like that? You know, I don't know for sure, but I would imagine. It's probably more than they want to because it's not mm -hmm. something to them is important, right? right. And I mean, through, yeah. I mean, story and making video games it it costs so much money these days anyway, and um and studios are under a lot of pressure to stay uh within or under budget. So mm -hmm. I mean, this would be something um as long as the they would implement it at the the the, the planning like the kind of financial stages of it they could uh the truth of the, the the sad fact of the matter is there's not enough money in it for them probably for that to, for that to be the case you know i mean it's we're talking about um um software and development companies here and they are trying to make money so um yeah. you know i mean it's it's kind of one of those unfortunate things but um like everything else if people make enough of a, a stink about it or or raise enough awareness about it that's something that could always change down the road you know exactly. so exactly. Um, i just think it's such a shame because a lot of these games pride themselves on having such beautiful graphics like breath of the wild was like look at look at our beautiful open world and it's like right well, some people can't see that right well, and that's yeah. Exactly yeah. That's, yeah this is why the the two screenshots i want to show you guys first being mm -hmm. the switcher Witcher got a lot of flack because if you look at the subtitles, look how tiny those are. Oh, they're oh, so yeah. small. They're very tiny. They're so small, so especially on console. Someone, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so if you have low vision, you can't see what the heck is being said. Some um, older mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed games are like that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're very tiny. And something else to look at, and I'll show in the next one too, but look at the coloring of the, the, the of everything going on, both the prompts for mm -hmm. the 
to move the story on and it gets lost. Yeah, yeah, you the know, yellow. The vision. yellow can be hard to see if you're if you have colorblind issues, I know. Exactly. And if you have low vision, it's gonna be mm-hmm. hard to see because you can't distinguish the colors. Right. And if it's, you're someone it's hard who, normally, yeah. Oh, for sure. We yeah. struggle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Spe- I mean, it's especially in this who- specific scene with the green and the brown behind it of the, that little cottage, yeah. like it's it's mm-hmm. it damn near blends in. Mm-hmm. The next one is actually oh god, ah. there we go. Um, let me oh crap, I went back to clear to the beginning. Um, Assassin's Creed, so the new one, just out mm. now, and I never even thought about this. And I was watching. There is a deaf streamer who's very much an advocate for accessibility, mm-hmm. and he pointed this out, and I never freaking thought about this guys let me bring this full screen again look at this corner Mm, you have white and very light yellow against a bright background yep Mm -hmm. yep and if you look here where your the markers are white Mm -hmm. against white (laughs) yeah yikes yeah um so there's a lot of issues with accessibility in this way because of this um because not only for someone who's low vision, but if someone is blind and they're relying on subtitles and the quest markers in the corner to tell them what to do, it get it disappears. Right, right. I feel like they should almost go with like I, I'm I'm just gonna speak in Photoshop terms like that, like n- like that negative filter where like mm-hmm. it would it'll like negate the opposite color of whatever's on the screen. Right. Or make it yeah. stand out against that background. Exactly. Right. I feel like that would be super helpful. Even that, like that yellow against the, like normally you would think yellow would pop out against purple, but in this mm-hmm. case, it really doesn't. Like right. It's lost in that greenish in the background because mm-hmm. green and right. yellow are so similar. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so while this, I mean, this game is getting a lot of good reviews and people are really enjoying it, but, um, you know, because those graphics are, I mean, look at that. That's beautiful. Handsome. Beautiful. Yeah. But like when I first looked at this, I saw this. I didn't even see Oh, I didn't even realize there was words there. Yep. <laughs> they, they blend in so to... easily. Well, you said handsome. I had to look at the face. <laughs> I still have to look at the uh, uh, handsome right. man. So I'll bring my, myself back here. Oh, um, hello. Oh, oh, hi. I do exist. Hi. I'm not just a voice. Um, <laughs> All right, hold on. So I wanted to show those so that people could see when you're playing a game, you know, be, be mindful of these things. Start looking for things that... Um, you might not normally think about and how that could affect someone. Like Jono said, flashing um, and a lot of movement I know makes him sick. Um, mm-hmm. Like CSUs will alone. probably make him super nauseous. Oh, I'm mm. sure. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> they simulate the the, the C the like C movement to a crazy level in that it, game. It, I, it makes it makes me. I sick. could never I could never I'm play like, Sea of Thieves so. in VR. I would literally like vom like I would because it's it, it's that like yeah anyway yeah sorry. or even like seizure when you load up the screen it has that seizure warning with the flashing lights so that's, mm-hmm. that's why I asked that question like sometimes people instead of having that white light flash in your face sometimes I feel like if it was a black screen it wouldn't mm-hmm. trigger trigger them is right right, right. So exactly. yeah yep, absolutely exactly um a couple things so I'm gonna go back here now that I'm on cam yeah I'm gonna grab my xbox controller maybe nope <laughs> I'm sitting I'm my oh. <laughs> <laughs> The chair was on this This side. (laughs) So I've seen where they've actually had um, some of the adaptive things that they've done is that they will put, I don't know what that is, um, a bar here that when Mm -hmm. you pull on it, it catches that top button. Okay. Uh, okay. Or when you push on it, it catches the lower trigger. Oh, okay. That's cool. The problem with that, though, is if you don't have this motion, Mm -hmm. it's not going to work very well. Right. Um, and again, too, I was watching the guy demo it on his thing, and he's talking about it. And as he's doing it here, his thumb was hitting this, the left joystick. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah, if I'm you're like, trying I'm holding to do... mine right now, I feel like that'd be super hard to do. I... Yeah. Mine's yeah. upstairs. Rip. And even if, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's meant too. so if somebody is playing from top down, they can push forward or pull back on it. But again, how easy would it be to hit one of those buttons? So it's not a perfect solution. Mm-hmm. It's at least something i guess mm-hmm. um and as i mentioned some of those one-handed controllers they will extend out the grip so that yeah it's easier to hang on to mm-hmm. um so i backtracked on those what was my other i'm almost done guys Thanks or even the, no you're fine the switch has that attachable grip to make it easier to hold mm-hmm. yeah yep it's mobile. Mm-hmm. for sure 
Well, yeah. even something like, um, I don't know how many people saw, but um, our own Splice had this awesome mm -hmm. controller that works for the Switch. And he even talked about how it fit better in his hand and was more comfortable. And that wasn't designed necessarily for accessibility, but for mm -hmm. someone who maybe has issues with their hands, having to be being able to actually reach those controls a little bit easier can make a difference. Is it a pro controller um, that he has or what, what kind of controller is he no, have for it's, Switch? Or is it a, literally it's on the into, back. Oh, it slides, cool. It slides into it's basically like the um the grip, but instead of it being um flat like the normal ones are, mm. it was I think correct me if I'm wrong, because it was kind of like off kilter to be able to mm -hmm. cause, because because the, the joy cons the joysticks are obviously in different spots right 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 so it, it was built a certain way to be able to like it is basically like on a slant kind of so it makes it easier for you to reach all the buttons i believe yes I okay think. very cool very cool yeah. um so yeah there's um there's there's starting to be things out there and uh, that's the issue i guess i have is like it's really cool that they developed that and that like they shared it with Splice and then and putting it out there. But the thing is they probably didn't design it with accessibility in mind. Right. Maybe they did. I don't know for mm -hmm. sure. But my thought is they're like, it's a comfort issue, right? It's yeah. something their world problem type of deal. Right. Ergonomic. Right. Exactly. Um, but it could have so much more potential in a lot of ways. Um Hoenma, thank you for that raid. Yes. And by <laughs> awesome. It, I did see the, I thank you for the link. And I did mention the um, adaptive controller. So thank you. Um, it's really cool. Xbox seems to be kind of Microsoft as, as ahead of some of this from what I've seen of the, of the bigger, you know, when it comes to Nintendo and PlayStation. I, Matter of fact, I saw a lot of issues with Nintendo. Platforms of PC and the console. I think that they, mm -hmm. they have that broader spectrum to be able that, that right. they have to kind of, you know, mm -hmm make up for instead of just being you know playstation just has their console exactly. and nintendo has theirs they kind of have both right right exactly. mm -hmm. no worries Bile. i do appreciate it so thank you um <laughs> 123 oh my god Sorry. Yeah, and <laughs> another thing that 100 oh you are going to be sorcerer i'm going to die um they also have a feature on xbox um well actually the xbox one to be specific called co-pilot and you can actually set it up so that you have two controllers that work as one. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Um, so you can have perhaps like it kind of ends up making it so that kind of like the, con the uh, adaptive controller, but you can have both there and then you can use one for one thing and one for the other. So you have the mm -hmm. cool pilot feature. That's um, neat. So that's something that's kind of cool. Uh, Did you Kio notice any... any? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, Keo said that she thinks Mars is right. Uh, because PC culture has a much larger foothold in accessibility, Xbox has gotten a lot of accessibility features ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. What were you going to ask? Uh, did you notice if any, especially for like PC stuff, I know there's a streamer, his name's like Handy Capped at Seven. He has some kind of disability where he was actually only born with seven fingers. So like mm -hmm. I noticed it was super hard for him to like hold a mouse. I didn't know if you saw anything that might like, that had like straps that was able to, you know, that like say the mouse wouldn't slide off or I didn't, like but that. I wouldn't be surprised. We've done stuff like that. Give me one second, guys. Let me show you something musically. Hold on. Yeah. Ah, just thought yeah, that. I realized I would have it ready. <laughs> I was gonna say I know they have a crap ton of stuff like musically for accessibility, but and you would think for for especially for gaming because obviously gaming has been around for such a long time. Even with, right. You know, like old Nintendo consoles, old Oops, Atari consoles, or back old... into the screen. <laughs> 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 So musically, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't, there should be, because it's really something as simple as some Velcro in a lot of ways. Um, like the weed thing that had, the, that had that little strap. Here's stuff. this really funny looking thing, right? And mm -hmm. this is what for, for music. Um, it has the grip for the hand. So the hand goes in yeah, and you just wrap it around. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I have it upside down because I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> um, other way around. There we go. Um, and I've actually used this with people. So there's there's got to be something, I would think, with a mouse that would work similarly. Mm -hmm. Because for someone who doesn't have the ability to, to grasp. Grip, yeah. Um, there is a little slide in here that you can slide a mallet into. The handle of a mallet. Mm-hmm. 
this one isn't going in because it's not one of them that it's meant for, but that's, there we go. Oh, okay. And so the person can actually do that. Without having to grip oh, okay. it. Okay. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they can still drum, they can whatever, smack it. Mm -hmm. they, there's no, no grip needed at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's got, sorry, Kyo. <laughs> so there's got to be, let me see if I can get it off. Oh, I'll Kyo again. There we go. You're free. Sorry. <laughs> um, Oh, Kia, we love you. If there's not, there should be, and it, it's it's something literally as simple as possibly Velcro. Yeah, because this is not a, a <laughs> complex design or anything. It's it's mm -hmm. literally just that Velcro actually makes yeah. me think of like if you were to like Velcro something around your hand and say like this part was actually like a magnet, and mm -hmm. you have like a magnetic mouse and it just like clicked. Right. Because like I know I know like there. a couple I think of Corsair Razor mice have like the magnetic clip-ins. Mm -hmm. so, you can ch so you can change the side buttons and stuff. So I thought that, yeah. like, that'd be super cool. Um, kind of. I, that's just what I thought of when I saw that bell code. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be nice to Kyo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's um. Oh my goodness! Oh, the real crazy. handy. The real handy. He streams. He's a CS:GO streamer. Um, I I can't remember what his condition is, but he really he doesn't his it's oh what the hell is it called he basically doesn't have arms or legs for the most part there there's okay there's like that much of it okay. and he the dude can play csgo like nobody's business mm -hmm. um that's amazing and i it almost looks like on his right he's got a touchpad that he okay. uses to, to swipe mm -hmm. um i haven't talked to him i don't know for sure what his setup is mm -hmm. um but there's definitely something that he's got that lets him move, do that quick movement so that he can swap between what he's doing and when he's purchasing at the beginning of the round and all of that stuff that he's using. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so there are things out there. There are some touch pads. I saw a foot pad. I'm not sure how it works or how mm -hmm. its functions are, um, but there are some other stuff. Hone my scissors, the blind guy that's a pro SF gamer. Um, yeah. Um, there's a guy that um, his name's Half Coordinated. He does stream. He's also a speedrunner, and he has some looks like some first place records on certain games. Oh wow! He's been at AGDQ, um, mm -hmm. and he has hemiparesis. So basically, his entire right side for him is non-functional. Mm -hmm. um, and he holds the controller with. He, he has the right hand. It's cradled there. He can cradle the thing, but everything he does is with his left hand. Um, and he's seems to be a really cool guy. Um. There was another guy, I can't think of his name, right? Nayo. Um, who's also a streamer. There's a lot of streamers out there, guys, that have um, disabilities of some sort that are out there. And they're willing to talk to you and explain to you. For example, the one guy, he has um, all of his that he does. There's a tube. There's that sip and puff, like the joystick stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was explaining to you guys. And he was playing, I was watching him, he's playing Jurassic uh, World. Mm -hmm. He's moving around and he's doing everything we do, you know, put this awesome. the, the meat little um, vegetarian <laughs> dino in with the meat eater and like doing the same thing we all do. Right. Um, and somebody came in and he's like, hey, I'm, you know, I hope you don't mind me asking, but what's the tube? You know, like, what's that thing in your mouth? And he got super excited. He was like, this is how I, how I play. And he's, um can't remember what it might like a car accident or i can't remember forgive me i looked at so many different people i cannot remember all the things mm -hmm. um but he is paralyzed as well and so he doesn't have that movement it looked like he might be semi-paralyzed and it looked like there might have been a little movement in his arms but for the most part it's not going to be that movement we have with mouse and keyboard and he was doing it all with moving the by moving that the the tube it would move where he needed it to go and then this mm -hmm. the, the pop and sip so um there's some really cool people and so if this is something that any of you have found an interest in or maybe you want to help more or learn more there's a lot of great organizations out there there's able gamers special effect um crap i wrote their name down in two different places and of course i'm not going to remember <laughs> um I will find it. I actually sent it to you, Mars. What the heck are their names? Oh, oh Warfighter Engaged. 
Yep. Um, Warfighter Engage is really cool. They're uh, an organization that helps um, wounded veterans who have come back and, and are gamers, but they have, you know, maybe a prosthetic or whatever and they can't play in that traditional sense. Um, so there's a lot of different organizations, a lot of different people out there. There's also a conference coming up in France um, the 22nd, I believe it is, uh, this month. And there's a bunch of these people who are talking about accessibility. And a lot of them are people who are involved with the gaming community as well. Mm -hmm. um, go out and find some disabled gamers. I met this really cool um, deaf gamer who plays Dead by Daylight. And he's cool. Oh, nice. He is. He cracks he me up. He probably plays it calmer than us. Yes. He, yes. No. <laughs> mm -mm, no. Not at all. <laughs> He <laughs> freaks out and like the he's talking about like his heart going and mm -hmm. like there was one time he was hiding behind a tree and the killer was going by and he's like, <laughs> That's That's awesome. Awesome. And, like he was freaking out and he's awesome and he was so much fun. That's awesome. Um, and so you know go out and and find some of these guys get to know them support them. Um, there's a lot of charities you know you can do Tiltify charities uh, streams for. Like able gamers, they have a page set up. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, think about, you know, some of your friends. Like, I didn't know that Baggy was partially colorblind. So now Same. playing a game, that will change how, you know, not in, the, not in the sense of like looking down at someone because they have something. It's more of mindful of, mm -hmm. you know, if they don't see something, your, your maybe communication. it's... Communication, right. exactly. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, because some of those games, Overwatch, Siege, whatever, maybe if they didn't see something instead of getting mad at them, maybe they legit didn't see it because right. they couldn't. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and another thing, too, that a lot of people tend to do is, like, they'll go in and they'll see a streamer and it's like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. And they're like, for what? Like, I'm just me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. You right. don't have to feel sorry for someone who's a gamer. You know, if they're sitting there and they're playing, they have the controller here and they're using their chin and mouth to use mm -hmm. the controller and kicking butt. Be like, you know, you kick yeah. my ass because I'm I'm no good. Like, I, right. Yeah. You know, they're playing and they're and they're enjoying themselves. So, um, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's all almost, that matters. It's almost as if you're apologizing. You know, saying like, "Oh, I'm so sorry," and then it's like it's like making it such a negative thing, right? It's right. As, it's, it's as if they should be sorry for it too, but really, there's mm -hmm. nothing for them to be sorry about. Mm -hmm. Exactly, they are who they are, and yeah. Um. Oh, one last thing I want to talk about. I almost missed this. EA. EA gets a lot of shit, right? Because it's EA. Right. Um, EA. It's in your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Sorry, but sorry. <laughs> but they do have one thing that is one of the only big developers that you know um, of games that i saw and they have um a resource website that you can go to and if anybody's interested be more than happy to share my giant list of um oh wow of uh resources Resource. with them <laughs> but they have um I was trying to find the, the name of the website anyway um for three of their games for the sports UFC, Madden NFL, and the NHL. NHL. Holy mm -hmm. crap. Hockey. <laughs> um, for both. So for PS4 and <laughs> X-Bone. Them, their sports. Sports. Um, they actually have accessibility options that you can do and go into. So for people who are blind or visually impaired, um, they have haptic feedback. Because we know we get so used to playing games and we get that buzz in when something happens. Mm -hmm. like an explosion or whatever. They have it set up so that... For example, if you're about you're playing uh, Madden and you're about to get tackled, it'll buzz a certain way and let you know so that you can counteract that so that you don't get tackled. Oh, that's neat. Um, and then it explains how all of the different movements work, um, how the different fields work, so that blind um, can do all of those games. Um, they offer alternate controls. They have five different channels for audio, so you can fine tune. Because sometimes music will completely kill somebody who's hard of hearing. Oh, yeah. Completely take out all the other things. You can turn that specific part down and keep this other stuff up. Um, That's cool. They also do really have... Nice. They mm. do have where you can, I think, tone down the flashes. I can't remember what they said. I'll have to go back and look. Because um, this part of my research was done last week. Mm. <laughs> well, the sound <laughs> thing is really cool. Because, like, like, last year I actually 
burst my eardrum so like i lost hearing in this ear so mm-hmm. sometimes if like like when i'm in siege and there's like a really loud gunfight like i can't hear people sneaking up behind me i can't hear anything because all i hear is bullets mm-hmm. flying over my head mm-hmm. so it's just yeah. like like you said like even like in the star screens like i always make sure like i take that um you know the, the music volume and put it way down because otherwise like i can't hear anything mm-hmm. so like sometimes i'll just like i'll just take this one off because like i can actually hear better yeah yeah if it's not like everything blasting in this ear so it's just like that's cool that they can allow you to mm-hmm. fine tune all the audio settings absolutely a little mixer within it yeah um, still manage to clutch colorblind um <laughs> settings as well i don't know again how good they are mm-hmm. <laughs> right but i guess at least in a way they're trying um it's something it's at least something and hopefully they will continue the big thing, and if you know you can ever find yourself in a position where you can encourage the developer in any way that they'll listen, um, you know, if they develop something for someone who is blind, get people who are blind to test it. Get people mm-hmm. who are deaf to test what they're, you know, what they're working on with specific disabilities, whether it's because they're paralyzed or have little movement in their hands or whatever. Get mm-hmm. those people in there and have them test it because a lot of times they're just putting this out there and it looks good on paper and yeah, it seems like it'll work, but then it doesn't really. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Kind of like the uh, the using the eye sensors. You know, it's the eye tracking. It sounds like it sounds exactly. It sounds like a perfect fix, right? The person can't move, but they can move their eyes. Then they can move the mouse, but there's going to be that delay. There's going to be issues like with Minecraft. I was curious about how the attack feature works because how many times for those who've played it, you get down in a cave and you have a freaking cave spider on you and you're like freaking out trying to kill it. And so I was thinking, well, how does that work? Like you can't click every single time you want it to swing. So how they went about doing that is they just made it so that it just stays on. Oh, like a toggle. Okay. It's just constant. Yep. It's that okay. constant attack until you tell it to shut off. Um, It'd be cool if you did it with like blinking, but then you'd be like, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, um, <laughs> so, um, I even there's there's so many cool things. There's a, an entire Reddit um, thread. <laughs> I had to think for a second. I was like, "What's that word?" Um, for disabled <laughs> gamers, and it was there that I found there was another streamer, um, Ghost Arm. He has um, part of his right arm is amputated. Okay. He was playing Fortnite. He got a 15 kill streak win. Oh wow! Wow, um, never gotten a 15 kill streak win yeah, ever. Like, I've gotten one. I was like, I can't even get ever, one. ever. Um, <laughs> so, that's awesome, though. That's amazing. No, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a lot of really awesome people out there, and they're they're showing that they can do this. Now we just need to get other people on board and and working with them so that, um, you know, the stuff is more accessible because it is important i mean we all um stop swearing what did i say <laughs> i don't even know what i said no oh, crap it's just vile oh, crap. <laughs> um vile. <laughs> oh heck um but yeah it's it's so my what i want would love to give to everyone here hanging out um oh fortnite sorry um <laughs> to be mindful of those things again if you have somebody that you're playing with um you know who who maybe doesn't have a lot of control in their hands you know if they miss a shot don't don't get on them Mm -hmm. because physically maybe they couldn't like just treat them like you would anyone else i mean if you're getting on anybody because they were playing poorly maybe you shouldn't be playing games (laughs) multiplayer Mm -hmm. games you know um, mm-hmm. because they want to be able to experience and play the same things that we all do. Um, so don't, don't take the fun out of it. Right Absolutely. Now. Absolutely. I mean, I think I pride That's ourselves on, on the, word, really. yeah, yeah. And I pride, yeah. I, I, I think we should pride ourselves on, uh, the people we have in this community. I know I haven't played with anyone like that. Anyone who's played Siege with me or Mars or Musi know that and none of us are going to give you shit for uh, your potato aim or not being able to play well because um, none of us play well in very long uh, streaks and or all the time. So, yeah. you know, um, 
but but that that is a very good point. Um, just think that um, there might be something going on there that you might not know about. Um, just be patient. Just have fun with. Just have fun with your friends. Don't worry. Don't worry about. Yep. It, don't worry if you lose your plat status. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. That's right. Don't do it. Get some friends. To, <laughs> get some friends to carry you there. It's fine. <laughs> I don't want to see it. I don't. <laughs> I'll probably tell. This is something I'm super passionate about right now. So if any of you want to talk to me about it, um, if you have any experiences, any of that, I'd I'd love to hear um, more because this is something that you'll probably see me talking more about here and there and everywhere. Yeah, and as you've noticed, we have a, we even have a couple people in TC that you know have their own you know battles with accessibility. I know Eric, like he said, with his hands, like his his controller broke, and he said he was having a really hard time playing. He you know, play. yeah, he, could, he couldn't play, and especially if, for someone who wants to stream full time, that that's a very big detriment to what you want to do. Is yeah, he, he and, can't and play you're... Yeah, exactly. And like you said, like if people are using it as an escape, like I I know for me, like not even, <coughs> not even you know disability wise like when my computer was acting up when i couldn't play like i got super down about it like i can only imagine how you know people oh yeah not, this stuff isn't readily available to them they're, they're adjusting to us and we're not really giving them any adjustment back yep um, exactly. yep exactly. absolutely so I, can, I can only imagine the mental wear and tear on them as well as physical wear and tear that they have to do to be able to game absolutely but even then eric got top frag over us he did yeah, great. He, he's badass. Yeah. He's yeah, like he is. constantly. He did great. Anybody yeah. that's played with him, he is like constantly like, "Sorry guys, I'm so bad." And that's like, "No, dude." I know. That <laughs> breaks, breaks my heart when people <laughs> apologize, and it's just like, mm -hmm. "You're still doing great." Like, it's just, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's meant to be yeah. fun. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Exactly. He got a kick out of Eddie getting Twitch drone to death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I had to. Talk that about bully. Good. Talk about bullies, chat. There's one right there. It was there you shocking. go. There you go. There you go. It was funny like the first three times. It was. No, it's, it was. It's so funny. No, it was funny like the first 300 times. It was. So I'm glad you got a laugh out of it. That's good. That's good. I'm just trying to enlighten chat, okay? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So that's all I have um, regarding this. I do want to point out tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, we have uh, Zero Creations. Sorry, blanked. He, what did he tell me he's fixing tomorrow? It was really tasty. He's uh, cooking! Sweet and smoky pork chops, y'all. Ooh. Mm. Uh, that is what he's working on, and our one and only Brock in the Box will be back doing some more yoga. Uh, he has a new breathing exercise that's designed to help calm calm you down. He wants to go over the sun salutation and some lower back pain um, exercises. Right so, on. Right. <laughs> uh, right and on. he starts at 9 p.m., so keep that in mind right here on the same channel um i'll do a reminder as well and then uh on saturday at uh saturday at 9 p.m also on this channel we will be hosting another fortnite tournament um we are still looking for a couple of Yeet. teams if you guys still want to play i know i said that you know signups are done on tuesday but we're looking for a couple more teams just so we don't have to have any buys because you know it sucks when you're having a tournament and have to make people wait Right. You know, to, to start the round. So we need about three to four more teams. If you guys are interested, first come, first serve. Don't be afraid to sign up. The sign up form is in announcements on the Twitch Crew Discord server. 9 p.m. EST. Right here. The only time zone that exists. Yeah. Sorry. Be there for all of the <laughs> four minutes goodness. Right. Like, I, yeah. I'm excited ish. Yeah. Right. Um, let's see if I have anything <laughs> to add. Uh, movie night continues Sunday. Uh, we're going to keep watching spoopy stuff. Um, I would like to watch the first and second conjuring. I don't know yet. You guys know, we always kind of decide last minute. It's kind of whatever, um, everyone wants to watch. So, but yeah, spooky, spooky mo uh, movies all month. So <laughs> yeah, I think that's all I got. I'm, now that I'm looking at it, um, I made an announcement earlier today at nine o'clock in the morning asking you guys for what kind of tournament you guys <laughs> wanted next week on Saturday, because next week is the last Saturday before TwitchCon, which I think will be the last Saturday of this month, technically, for a tournament. Um, right now, you guys voted 17 for Siege, 12 for Rocket League. Um, I know we just kind of had a Siege tournament and haven't had a Rocket League in a while. They're pretty close, so I will let you guys know which one we are going with in about an hour or two. Siege. So, stick Siege. With. Siege. Stick with. Siege. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure Siege. it out. Siege. <laughs> so 
Oh yeah, expect another ping. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry. Pings. All the pings are important. Please. All of the pings. Please. Yes. We don't, ping. Don't, don't. We. We yeah, ping because we care. We ping because we care, and because we have <laughs> stuff we want to share with you, not because we're trying to annoy you. I promise. Absolutely. And if you guys mm. want any of the links or more information to the accessibility from Muse, don't be afraid to DM her. Ask any of the mods. We will hook you up with her. She's got plenty of the information. She's <laughs> super knowledgeable about all of this stuff. Yep. And uh, she's a great person. So don't be afraid to approach her. So. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yay! Well, I think that's uh, I think that's it. So I think uh, I do believe Mr. Eric the Bearded is streaming some Sea of Thieves. Uh, so Mr. Noodle Arms, if you want to go ahead and take us away and. Uh, get that raid command started, or I guess I could too, seeing, seeing how I'm here. And I, oh, there it is. And so yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was already halfway through the name. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. Thank you guys. So all uh, for thanks for joining. Here. Yep, yep. Eddie Nice, Misha Shell, Mars Echelon. Till next time. Love you guys. Bye. See ya. Bye. Let's go. Reed. Bye. <laughs> Jesus, I'm cancer. Oh man, good job, guys. That was great. Yes, it was. Great talk, Musi. That was that was very knowledgeable. I really enjoyed that. There's Baggy. He's still kind of awake. Hi, guys. Good morning. Mm, hello. Should probably help with the rain.